Hello there, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute pin cushion applique design. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I have over 500 sewing and quilting tutorials. For my applique design, I've cut out a piece of canvas that measures in at 16 inches by 16 inches. This is fairly kind of thick canvas that you would buy from your fabric store. This to one side while we concentrate on the applique sections. Now we're going to go old school and get out our compass and what I did here, I placed my point down on the mat and I opened it up so it's basically four inches in width. For this tutorial I'm using heat and bond light and I'm basically just going to put my compass down, I'm going to make sure it can make that half circle and it can. So I'm just going to make a mark all the way around. We don't care right now if it's not straight. I'm just going to do a little bit past where that straight line is going to be cut. So this is my first section for my applique piece, which is going to be a little mini pin cushion. I'm going to cut this section out. We are not at this point going to cut on the line, cut far away from the line. And then put that section to one side. So I'm going to cut strips of heat and bond that are three quarters of an inch in width and at least seven and a half inches in length and I know you're going to say Cassie these are a bit too wide for a pin but we're going to cut them down later you want to have excess because you want to have less fraying and the glue is going to help that later on I'm just going to do four pins you can do more you can do less it's completely up to you now I've set my compass to half an inch and this is for the pin heads. I don't want to do them too small. So I'm just going to create them circles and I'm going to do four of these for my pins. At this point in time, do not cut on the line, cut a big gap around. This is an absolutely perfect project for scrap fabrics. I've taken out my two inch squared box and my 10 by 10 squared box to see what I can use with this. I love the gingham and I love this absolutely bright pink, but it might actually overpower my pink cushion. So I'm going to go with the gingham. If you have creases on your fabric, just press them out. So this is the right side of your fabric. It's always referred to the right side of fabric where the design's on. So we're going to flip it over and then we're going to put the glue face down. So the paper part that you drew on is going to be face up. Now this is just slightly going over. So it really doesn't matter because I have a Teflon sheet on the back of this. So I'm going to press this on to my Teflon sheet. So when I do get glue onto the Teflon sheet, I can just scrape it off. Now you're gonna use your iron to whatever setting that Heat and Bond tells you to use. And I'm not paid or sponsored during any part of this tutorial. And we're gonna adhere the glue to the wrong side of the fabric. And like I said, if I get glue on my sheet, I can just scratch it off easily just with my nail. Go through and use whatever colours you want to use for all of your applique pieces. Now, because my pin heads are so small, I wanted to be very careful with the fabric I was selecting for it. You don't want to go too big on your designs because it's not going to look too good when you put it on your pin. You're not going to be able to see that design anyway. So either use solids or a small pattern design. For the pin cushion section, cut around the oval. Then you're going to cut it so it basically will look like a half circle. And this half circle basically measures at nine and a half. I made my pins a quarter of an inch in width and five inches in length. And now I'm going to cut around all of my pin heads. 
I've got my canvas piece on the bottom now and when you're working with applique you want to make sure that the pieces that should be underneath sections are underneath so when we're working on these pins we don't want the pin to be like this so you would not stick the pin cushion down first you're going to stick the pin sections down first so you're going to make sure that everything is lined up exactly how you want them to be so this is pretty much how i ever want everything to be lined up so i'm going to take away the pin cushion section and I'm going to make sure that everything is lined up where it was going to go. I'm going to remove this section away. I'm going to take one of my pins away. And then there's paper on the back, remember. So we have to take this off. Taking a pin, you are going to score a little of that paper. So it starts it off. And then you're going to peel that back. And then that should reveal the glue. So we're going to strip this back. I went a bit further up and there you go. You can see the glue. So now I'm going to put that back down where I had it and I'm going to do it the same with all of the other sections. Now put everything back in place. Just make sure that everything is where you want them to be. So if you just want to curve them a bit around, you can start rearranging everything. And then once you are ready, you'll be able to press them down. Just make sure you have a little bit of them pins overlapping into that pin cushion. And now I have my little ironing pad underneath. Everything is where I want it to be. And I'm going to press that down to whatever heat and bond tells you to do. Now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch something to keep these into place and make it look a little bit more decorative as well. In my bobbin thread, I like to use a white or a black bobbin thread. These are a little bit thinner than just using regular polyester or any other threads. I just like to use them just because they're thinner. In my needle, I'm going to be using a dark pink a grey and a black and then I'll probably switch over to the black bobbin thread. When I first got my Baby Lock Soprano sewing machine the first thing I did was created a stitch guide. It has so many stitches and some of them look so much better stitched out than they actually do on the machine. So I would highly recommend that even if you don't have the same machine as I have, um, go through and stitch out every single stitch your machine does and then you can get a good idea of what they look like. Okay, I quite like this stitch 65, so I'm going to be using that on my sewing needles. If you have a baby block soprano like me, it's number 65 on this first set of stitches. There are two buttons on this machine that I want you to understand what they are. So basically when you choose a stitch like this, it's going to be a continual stitch, but you're going to want to come to the end of that stitch and get a full stitch left on that design. And basically you're going to press this when you're just near into the end and it will do that one stitch for you and then it will stop. The next button is this button and this will take you to the beginning of your design. So if you add different things here, then pressing this button would take you right back to the beginning. Another reason I like the Baby Lock Soprano is it'll actually tell you which foot to use. And the end foot is your decorative stitch foot. You don't want your regular foot on because it needs more space in order to stitch this design. In the top of my thread, I had the dark gray. In my bobbin thread, I have the black. And now I'm going to press the foot down and start stitching. If you're in trouble with the control, just turn your machine down and go nice and steady. Now I'm just coming up to the last part of where I want it to stitch. Now remember we have to press this key here just to let it know to finish this one and then it's going to stop. 
then I just recommend pressing this button a couple of times just so it takes a couple more stitches on the spot just to help tie it off. Then I'm just going to use my applique scissors and I can just get this cut off and I'm going to start on the next few rows. This is what it looks like so far, pretty cool eh? So then we are going to put the pin heads onto the pins. So like before we're going to score this and we are going to reveal the glue and once again you are going to cover up a little bit of that over the sewing pin couldn't get my words out then so we're going to make sure that a bit of it is covered up and then you're going to press these down like we did before and then press into place what i'm going to do with these pin heads is i'm going to drop my feed dogs and i'm going to put my open toe foot on and do a little bit of free motion quilting around here just thread sketching around each of these pins at the back of the machine here there's a switch you're going to switch this and it lowers the feed dogs you're going to turn your machine over onto a regular straight stitch if you have never done free motion quilting before this is a great place for you to start and you can just do some free motion stitching I like to go fast. I find that I can't do it slow. Now this is what it looks like with the pin heads on. So the next thing I want to do is now put my pin cushion down. So we're going to make sure that we have it in its place that it's going to be put on and then we are going to score the back to reveal that glue again and then we're going to stick it down make sure your presser mat is placed on the table and you also want to have some of them pins going underneath because we want to make it look like it's in the pin cushion and then we're going to adhere it into place here is 46 right on that first stitch guide here don't forget to pop up them feed dogs the same way that you lowered them and change your foot over to the j foot i've changed my thread color from pink and also changed my bobbin to white i have lowered back my speed down to low so i have a bit more control and i'm going to start stitching this into place What I notice about this stitch, and just be mindful if you want it to actually look like this, is that it was using what was in the bobbin to create the other side of this stitch. So if you look at mine, it kind of like looks like it's a zigzag, but it isn't. That other stitch that you can't see is the bobbin. This is what it looks like. How cute is this? Leave a comment down in the description box down below and in the next video I'm going to show you how to turn this into a fabulous looking cushion case. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video. I have over 500 sewing and quilting tutorials so please subscribe and watch more videos. Bye bye!